So now I welcome another wonderful colleague, uh, Carmen, who is going to talk about someone who we have always had to have today, um, Val Hooks. Thank you, Jan. Uh, can you hear me well? Yeah, right? Yes, thanks. Yes, excellent. excellent. Fantastic. Um, I came to theory because I was hurting. I came to theory desperate, wanting to comprehend, to grasp what was happening around and within me. She grew up in her 1991 essay theory as liberatory practice. Today, I'm, I'm excited to, to discuss the life and work of the remarkable Bell Hooks, a prominent feminist scholar, author and activist whose contributions to the field of education and social th theory have been nothing sort of transformative. As herself confirmed, education is the practice of freedom, the means by which men and women deal critically and creatively with reality and discover how to participate in the transformation of their world. Bell Hooks, uh, born in um, as Gloria Jean uh, Watkins, and adopted the name Bell Hooks in honor of her great grandmother, Bell Blade Hooks, born on September 25th, 1952, in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, into a racially segregated and economically disadvantaged environment. She overcame these challenges through education, uh, first graduating from Stanford University and earning her master's in English from the University of Wisconsin, and later on completing her PhD in English from the University of California in Santa Cruz. Undoubtedly, one of Bell Hook's more, most significant contributions is her emphasis on intersectionality within feminist race and class studies when this term was not yet coined. She discussed this in her book, Ain't I a Woman, published in 1981. She argued that feminism She'll address not only gender, but also the intersecting systems of oppression and class domination mediated by economic resources. And this intersectional perspective has had a profound influence as she expanded upon the work of Freire, making it more nuanced and inclusive for a non-white and non-male centered community. She was theorizing from the complexity of her own emotions and experiences of oppression, as we know. Equally, in the will to change, men, masculinity, and love, she attests that the first act of violence that patriarchy demands of males is not violence towards women. Instead, patriarchy demands of all males that they engage in acts of psychic self-mutilation, that they kill off the emotional parts of themselves. Her critique is a provocation, a claim about the invisibility of the deep inner misery of men within feminist writing. Furthermore, the most influential written piece of Bell Hooks was published in 1994 in the book title Teaching to Transgress. In this work, she emphasizes the importance of engaging students in critical thinking and questioning of societal norms. She called for teachers to be radical to challenge the status quo and to create a more inclusive classroom environment where students could learn not only from textbooks, but from their own life experiences. 
She argued that this approach empowered the students and encouraged them to be active participants in their education. Furthermore, uh, Bell Hooks' educational research emphasized that a caring and respectful classroom environment will foster a sense of community and help students feel valued and empowered. Education was a tool for liberation, a means to address social inequality and injustice. And knowledge was not simply a quest for information. It was a way to reveal the meaning of our lives, to make sense of the world, to draw connections. As the New York Times article published after her death in 2021 confirmed, it was extraordinary the way she mixed the emotional with the intellectual in her quest to make the experiences of Black women not just visible, but central to reimagining of society. Certainly, her work continues to inspire educators worldwide to create inclusive and transformative learning environments. And her legacy is a testament to the power of transformative teaching. In conclusion, as we celebrate the life and work of Bill Hooks about many other Black scholars today here, but also considering the, the evolving landscape of social and educational theory, along with the pressing inquiries raised, particularly by many Black, Indigenous, decolonial, and Global South scholars in the last years, I would like to offer some thought-provoking questions to guide a star or perhaps probably continue our discussion later on. And these are, um, so we question some of the underlying anthropocentric and universalist assumptions in her work, as suggested by some of the colonial scholars. Or are these points, uh, are these really points genuinely substantive or just merely politically positioned? Has a spiritual or transcendental dimension been overlooked? And if so, what might be the reason behind this oversight? Thank you very much. And, and yeah, that was my contribution. That was brilliant. Thank you, Carmen. It's such a powerful, powerful beginning. Um, thank you so much.